Hey everyone, what we're going to go through today is the amino acid chromatographer, which is a required practical on the BTEC COP. So, what we're going to try and do is we're going to look at some different solvents and try and extract the actual chemical inside the solvent. And then we're going to do a chromatographer to actually try and separate out. Now, the difference between this one and the plant chromatographer is that they're all colourless liquids. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the equipment list. So just double check that you do have everything in front of you or you know what everything is. So, first line, we have chromatography paper. We have a splint. We have some capillary tubes. We have a Bunsen burner and a heat proof mat. Make sure that your gas is turned on, otherwise you're not going to get anything out of the Bunsen burner. Um, we have a plastic beaker, which has a paper clip inside of it. And then we have the three different solvents that we're going to be testing. So we have aspartame, leuene, and alanine. So they're the three solvents that we're going to actually be testing for. What we're going to use to extract the different solvents out of it is ninhydrin. So ninhydrin spray, and then we have a ruler to measure the chromatography paper, a pencil to draw your lines on your chromatography paper, a pipette, can be a dropping pipette or a medical pipette like this one, some cling film just to cover the top of the beaker while it's doing its thing. I think that's everything. So, next part of the video, I'm gonna show you actually how to set this process up. So once we've set this process up, it's a bit of a waiting time to actually get through the whole practical itself. So what we need is we need a chromatography solvent. Now, this is the chromatography solvent that we're using for this practical. It's six parts um, butan one -on one and a half parts uh, glacial acetic acid or ethanoic acid and two and a half parts distilled water. So it's important that your chromatography solvent is relevant to what you're testing for. If you produce the wrong chromatography solvent, you won't get the right results. So in which case, you'd have to do this whole process over again. So on the next part of the video, what we'll do is we'll go through the actual process and actual method and how to carry out the practical. Right, so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually prepare the chromatography paper. It's very important to make sure that you handle your chromatography paper with care. So make sure that you don't touch any of the chromatography front or the chromatography paper itself. The reason for that is if you start touching the chromatography paper, you will get invalid results and you'll get some weird results that will come off and you won't, won't be too sure whether it's the actual thing you're testing for or your fingerprints it's at itself so first thing that we're going to do is using your pencil and ruler which it should be in your kits about one centimeter from the bottom draw a line like so so you should be one centimetre from the bottom and that should give us plenty of space to actually use the chromatography paper and to move it up the front. The next part of the video, what we will do is we will actually show you how to prepare the capillary tubes that we're going to use to actually extract the solvent out of the free sample bottles. For this next part of the practical, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take some capillary tubes and we're actually going to split them in half. The reason for that is because if you're using just one capillary tube, it's using a lot of glass up. And as well as that, 
it means that if you get a shorter tube, you can get a more precise dot on the chromatography paper, which is what we're looking for later. So, with the capillary tubes that you've been provided with, what we're going to do is turn your gas on, like so. Make sure that the air hole is closed on your bunting, so follow your normal bunting procedures, and then we're just going to switch that on. Now, when doing this, we need to do it on a blue flame. The problem is the blue flame can be very hot, so we need to try and control that flame at some point. We need to try and limit the amount of gas that's going into it. So, a little bit of an expert tip, instead of using a, a higher flame or a taller flame, turn your gas down a little bit. So if you turn your gas down just a little bit, and put it into a smaller actual flame, and open your air hole on it, What you'll see is, just turn the gas up a little bit. You'll actually see that you've got a smaller flame that's easier to work with. Makes it safer, makes it easier for you to actually carry out the practical that you need to do. So, what you're gonna do is, hold the capillary tube, let's bring this close to the camera. Hold the capillary tube at both ends, and you wanna put the middle of your glass capillary tube into the middle of the flame. Now what you should see is, starts to melt and then just twist it let it cool for a second and then tap it now what you should get is you should get a little end it won't be straight and it does take practice to try and get it straight but try and get a point on the end of it let's go through that again just to show you So capillary tube, all both ends, middle of the flame, wait for it to start to melt and then just pull apart, give it a tap on the bottom. Like so. Now we can use this now to actually put into the solvents to try and test it out. So if we turn the gas off, the next bit that we're going to go through using the capillary tube that you've just made off the Bunsen burner we're going to actually use one of the solvents that we're testing for. We're going to start to put drops onto the actual actual chromatography paper itself.
Right, so it's been 40 minutes to an hour later. Um, the chromatography paper has now absorbed the solvent at the bottom, the chromatography solvent, and it started to travel up the paper itself. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to let it dry. While we're letting it dry, what we're going to do is we're going to pull a line of where the solvent front actually ends. So, I'm going to grab a pen from here. Just put a line where the solvent front goes up to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let that dry. So we're going to let that dry a little bit. We're just going to wait 10 minutes for it to dry. And then we can start the next part of it, which is actually adding the ninhydrin spray to it. Now the ninhydrin spray will actually bring the colour out of the solvents that you're testing for. So the actual chemical you're looking for should come out as a purple colour. It might not be super dark, but you should be able to see some type of colour change on the piece of paper itself. So check back in 10 minutes when the paper's dry and we shall go through the next stage. So it's been roughly 15 minutes since we put the uh, chromatography paper in the drying oven itself. Let's have a quick look at it. So if you look at the chromatography paper itself, it's probably difficult to see in the camera light, but you've got three dots that you can clearly see from the actual paper itself. So you currently got one on the bottom left hand side, one on the right and one in the middle. Now the one in the right and the one in the middle are pretty much in the same place. The middle one is slightly lower than the right one. But the next stage that we're going to do is we're going to put a line in the middle of each of those coloured sections so we can calculate the RF factor. Right, for, for this next section, it's better to have a piece of black paper in the background just so you can see the colours that little bit better. So, what we're going to actually do is, we're going to put a line in the middle of each of the coloured sections. The reason that we do that is because we want the middle point to make it the most accurate as it possibly can be. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to actually need to measure the RF factor on each of these. So to do this, what you need to do is measure from the line to the solvent front. Your solvent front's where your liquid ended. So in the next video, we'll show you the actual still picture of the solvent from. So measure the solvent from and the line at the bottom that you've made where it started. And what we need to do then is measure the middle of each of those lines. Now this bit you have to do yourself. I'm going to show you a picture of it now and then you can calculate the rest on the RF factor or the RF value.